Hi guys, today we're going to talk about Hollow Earth. Earth. And hit it. What got me interested in Hollow Earth was uh, the time I've been walking around in my backyard in the summertime and it seems like the ground's going to give out underneath the grass where you want to blame moles for digging tunnels but I think it's more that there's cavities and there's missing soil and missing firmament, missing rock that got me to want to look into what might be called the hollow earth theory. It must be hollow earth. I looked more into it, found out that the theory has been around for hundreds of years. It hasn't totally died out. It sort of has been debunked by the flat earthers, but I believe in both. So as I looked into it, uh, legend suggests that there was a hole at the top of the planet and a hole at the bottom of the planet. And those were both entries into this whole network of underground roads, cities, civilizations. Now the mystery is such that both these holes or these doors or portals into the hollow earth is now iced over and they call it the Antarctica or sometimes the North Pole and the South Pole. So one of the most famous people that got to see this for himself was a person named Richard Byrd and he became an admiral in the armed forces. He was entrusted to venture to these places where mostly people aren't allowed to go. So Admiral Byrd was the first one sanctioned to be able to take this flight over the North Pole. He came back after that and he did a series of interviews where he calmly and assuredly described something that he wasn't expecting to see and the fact was that this expanse of land was much bigger than he thought it was going to be. Also at the same time, he was seeing massive holes that were so deep they, are, they could also be described as abysses going way down even though they didn't have the equipment at the time except for like a pickaxe or two to sort of ch ch go down a little bit. And then they had to turn around because um, the ropes also weren't long enough. So they had to come back up. But we know nowadays that where they say everything's hidden in plain sight, if you're ever like driving around and you start hearing like a construction going on and you hear the jink, 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 jink sound, it's pretty certain that that would be uh, like a top secret operation where they are trying to drill deeper and get deeper and along the way they, they've, they're making longer ropes for people to go deeper in and um, they've been making some progress and again there's some interesting stories behind it. So when I'm not walking on my grass I'm out on the street. I took a trip into my uh, downtown area and I was walking down the street and a figure approached me wearing a shroud over their body. It was hard to see their face, plus they were wearing a mask. 
And um, they handed me a, lo- a note, took this note, handed to me, as if they knew that I needed to see this. And it said, Look for the three holes. So I, I took this as a clue. Look for the three holes. But then it was like, how am I going to be led to these holes? Well, the next thing, as I was walking down the street, another figure comes up to me, hands me this. A map of the land of Cavite. Hmm. Locations of perhaps the three holes. I was able to take this map that seemed to be hundreds of years old and I superimposed it over some area maps that exist today and I was able to find a perfect sync like up that set me on the road of what's called 101. So I felt it was best to hop in the van and go see if I could find these three holes. Whether or not I knew any of these holes were going to be the entrance to Hollow Earth, I decided to still seek them out. So along the way, the easiest one to find was hole number one. Hole number one wasn't too far out of town, maybe about 13 miles. Went into the tunnel, maybe hole number one would be the entry that I was hoping it would be but it wasn't. It actually came out on the other end. So I got in the van again, drove another 173 miles, came to hole number two. It's like, well, maybe the one in the middle is the right hole. And I went in there with a lot of hopes that this would be it. So I go in and it was the same result. I came out at the other side. So it must be hole number three. I get into the van. I drive another 380 miles and I come to a deserted dirt road. I had to get out and walk another seven miles. I get to the hole, I go inside. The thing that's different is I didn't come out at the other end of it. This is promising. I think I see a part of something there. It starts to go down. It gets pretty dark now, but it goes down. I went downward into the depth of it. It got darker and darker and darker. As I felt my way through this chasm, I was sensing air, little air currents, things blowing on my neck, things moving around me. It was really too dark to tell. I had, I had some light on me, but I could never pull them into the light. They're mostly coming from behind. And as I grappled around, I started feeling these things on the ground. And they weren't really rocks. It wasn't really a plant. So I took them. I took them out, put them in my pocket. And I figured once I got back up onto the Earth's surface, under the daylight, I could have a closer look at what this discovery might be.
I figure the best thing to do would be to place them in some sort of incubation, so I stuck them in the refrigerator. And the next day when I went to the refrigerator to pull them out again, but I wanted to study them further, they were gone. So obviously I liberated them from the hollow earth. They're probably out there somewhere. Everything.